Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and this year is incredibly busy for me. It feels like I have to be everywhere at once. I leave here, get a train to Wetteren, then from there I have to get to a school, then back to the train station to Ghent, to a school, back to the train station, back home again. I did the maths and I can't make my train if I just go on foot. And if I take the car, it would cost me well over 200 euros a month in fuel and in parking fees. So I had to find a quick and cheap way to get around. And my first thought was a folding bike. I actually looked at one online, wanted to buy one, but it wouldn't fit in my car. So that was a non-option. And it was around that time that I got this email from Gearbest about Xiaomi scooters being on flash sale. And so I just bought one right away. I bought this one for 245 euros, delivered to my doorstep only 33 days later. There are two versions of this Xiaomi M635 electric scooter. There's the normal one, which is quite expensive. And there's this one, the Youth Edition, which has a smaller battery and it also doesn't come with extra tires. Now, I'm lucky enough that I can actually charge this thing at every stop. So for me, it wasn't really important that my battery would last me 20 kilometers. Instead, this one will last me about 10 kilometers. So Xiaomi actually won quite a few design awards with this scooter and it's really easy to see why. It actually looks like a finished product for adults, not like some kid's toy on steroids. Everything is very nicely integrated. So the light, the headlight, for example, is in the stem. The tail light is in the fender. Cables are mostly internally routed and it just looks really nice. There are no visible bolts, none of that stuff. There is a 250 watt motor in the front wheel and then the battery is in this large platform for you to stand on. So it just looks super neat and people don't even see whether or not it's electric at first sight. Every single thing on this scooter actually has at least one purpose. The bell, for example, is both a bell, but it's also the latch on which you hook the scooter so you can actually pick it up right here. Not that you want to do it because it weighs around 15 kilograms so it's quite heavy. Luckily you don't have to pick it up an awful lot. There's just one hinge mechanism compared to folding bikes which often have three or even four if you count the seat post as well. And so it's super easy to fold it and unfold it so you can just roll it around whenever you want to instead of carrying it. Now what sets this scooter apart from the competition are the wheels. So these are eight and a half inch wheels and they come with two inch tires with air in them. So you typically run these tires at about four bars and at that pressure they're actually really comfortable and they take out a lot of vibrations. Now you're only really supposed to um, inflate these to four bar but I actually run them at five to get some extra range. Uh, also I'm well above the weight limit um, so you're only really supposed to weigh 75 kilograms but me plus my backpack and all my stuff in there it's probably closer to 100. Um, so I run slightly higher tire pressures, but it's been perfectly fine so far. I obviously bought this one because it's electric and it's really quick to commute on, but it's not like you can just twist this throttle and just fly off into the distance. It's actually a lot more like an electric bicycle where you have to actually kick it up to speed yourself and then it will assist you. So what happens is if you twist the throttle when you start, it won't assist you with anything. You actually have to kick it up to like five, six, seven kilometers an hour and then you press the throttle and it will then carry you up to 25 kilometers an hour. Now I say up to 25 kilometers an hour, I actually found that it's usually doing around 23, 24, um, but when the terrain gets a little bit rougher, if there's a lot of wind or if it goes slightly uphill, that speed will drop um, often to almost walking pace if you're in really hilly terrain. While I did say that I can actually charge this one at every single stop, it doesn't mean that range is not important. But unluckily for me, I actually got this one in the middle of winter. So I did all my testing in freezing conditions in the snow, in ice, in rain. And today was the first time that I actually was able to ride it in more than 10 degrees Celsius. Range, however, was pretty okay. So when it's freezing, I was getting about eight kilometers uh, of range with this thing at just full speed ahead. Um, when it got slightly warmer, like two, three, four degrees Celsius, it would get up to 10. And then today I actually got 14 kilometers of range out of this battery, which is pretty impressive given that this is the youth edition. So if you get like the full model, it'll probably go well over 20 kilometers. Now enough about the practical stuff. What is it like to actually ride this thing? It's incredibly fun. So I did say that it's more of like a finished product for adults, but it's still as fun as a kid's toy. Like you almost want to go to work just to ride the scooter. It's really a lot of fun. It's quick, it's very stable, it's easy to ride like 
everyone that I put on there could ride it straight away. If it was a little kid or like an older person, it was no issue whatsoever. So it's really usable. It's just, yeah, it's really easy to ride. However, the handlebar is perhaps a tiny bit too narrow for like bigger people like me. I'm uh, one meter 84. Um, so for me, the handlebars are perhaps a bit too narrow, but then if they made them wider, you'd get, you know, caught on everything because the handlebars don't fold. Another thing, and perhaps the big thing here in Belgium, is I have no idea whether or not this thing is actually legal. So I had people ask me, like, Lawrence, can I ride this thing? And I always had to say no, because I don't know if this thing is legal to ride. It's not a scooter, because it's not like it doesn't have a license plate, and it's not throttle only, but it's not like a bicycle either, because you can actually use the throttle to accelerate even when you're not kicking. So it's in this weird legal zone, like this legal gray zone. And I don't know whether or not it's legal to ride this one on public roads. That said, I have done well over 100 kilometers through the city of Ghent and Wetteren and Dendermonde and Aalst as well. And I have not been pulled over once. I had some weird looks from police officers, but I haven't been pulled over yet. So it's probably fine. And at best, the police doesn't know what the regulations are about this thing either. Anyway, being a Xiaomi device, there is obviously an app to go with the scooter. So you can get the Mi Home app. And in this app, you can see your battery voltage, your range, your speed. Although why would you be on your phone when you're riding your scooter? That's a bit of a weird one. Um, and there are also some other handy features in there, like for example, locking this device. So you lock it and then if someone tries to move it, it'll do a lot of annoying beeping. Uh, this is awesome, but the thing is, it will turn itself off after a while and then it forgets that it was locked. Also, you can just pick it up and you can still roll it away. It will just beep a lot at you. So then some closing thoughts on the Xiaomi M635 scooter. I'm super happy that I bought it. 245 euros is dirt cheap compared to a folding bike or just the fuel that I would pay. Like this thing would pay itself back in a month. So. I'm super stoked that I bought this and I can only recommend it to anyone, really. It's just super awesome. Um, even in like the horrible wet weather that I've been riding it in, I haven't had any shorts. Everything kept working perfectly fine, even if it was freezing. Although if it's freezing, you know, you get slightly less range and it won't go as fast, but that's okay, really. It's not all perfect though. So when I got this thing, first of all, I had to wait well over a month before I had it. And then I had to readjust the rear brake, which still doesn't provide an awful lot of stopping power. And there are other things. So like doing a full bolt check, inflating the tires, it may not be an issue to people like me who are quite experienced bike mechanics, but I can imagine that if you're not into like, you know, fixing stuff, it may be a bit scary for you to buy this because you will have to do some basic maintenance yourself. But those negative things are easily offset by the handy stuff, like the fact that you can easily carry it around. It's only one folding point. There's no greasy chain that will drop and get, you know, oil all over your hands and over your pants. There are fenders on there, so you stay perfectly clean even if the weather is horrible. The lights are integrated, so you never have to bother with charging lights. There's a bell already on this device as well. And it's just a super practical thing, which also happens to be fun and it also happens to be dirt cheap for only 245 euros when I bought it. Anyway, guys, if you like this video as much as I like my new toy or vehicle, um, hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, even hit the little bell icon so you won't miss a future video. If my weekly uploads here are not enough for you though, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more frequent updates. And if you want to support this channel with better lights and better audio and better lenses, better camera stuff, there's also a Patreon link in the description below. So please go ahead and check that out. For now though, massive thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.